<clears throat> there we go. Good morning. It's going to check that everything is working this morning. There we go. Let's just check my volume. It is working. All right. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cup of Faith. I am going to get started a little bit early uh, today. I'm waiting for people to log on, and as they do, we're just going to kind of get into it because I am excited this morning, a couple of reasons. Uh, a, I am super thankful that, again, we are over Facebook, and you are not here because I may or may not be in my pajamas. So that's always a nice that you don't have to wonder if I brushed my teeth or put deodorant on. So I'm thankful this morning that um, we are over camera. So that is good. But the real reason that I am just going to get going this morning is because my niece is on her way. She is five months old and I get to babysit her this morning just for a, an hour little bit um, while mom goes out and has a little bit of time and I am so excited to do that um, because I don't often get to see my niece and I'm looking forward to getting to see her this morning. Good morning Pastor Larry. Good morning Garnet. Um, yeah, welcome Pastor Larry from Edmonton. I hope that it is warm there. It's uh, chilly this morning here in Moose Jaw. All right, so as we get going, um, this morning I just felt like I wanted to read a Christmas story for you. Um, but it's maybe not a Christmas story that you would think of as a Christmas story, um, but it is definitely one that you know. So I just want to invite you this morning to um, not think of the story as we always think about it and try to listen in a way that you haven't listened before because the Word of God is living and active which means that every time we hear a story, we can hear it and learn something new. Even if we think we've gotten every piece of information out of it, um, God has something to say. And I just think that that is so true of the Christmas story. Every time a pastor uh, preaches a Christmas story, um, which would be Pastor Jeremy this past weekend, if you did not catch our ser service this past weekend, you're going to want to do that because, um, again, Pastor Jeremy just took the Christmas story and said it from a new angle in new ways that um, we don't always think about and I'm always in awe of how God can do that make us see something new in his word so good morning Teresita good morning Bailey uh, good morning Val nice to see you all all right so Christmas story here we go it sort of went together like peanut butter and jam God spread out all the land around Jericho for his people and now his people wanted him to spread out a king's robe for them so God gave them what they wanted, a king. But the first king, Saul, turned out not to want much of God after all. So God sent Samuel, a man who loved him, to go find another king. He had picked out one of Jesse's eight boys in Bethlehem. Daddy Jesse nudged his oldest son, the one with big broad shoulders, the one who was tall enough to play basketball, and the boy stood grinning right in front of Samuel. Well, surely, thought Samuel, surely he looks like he could carry a big sword and wear a big dazzling crown. He has to be the one in whom God has seen a king. But the Lord gently drew near to Samuel. But look here, I don't see the way you see. You people look at the wrapping paper on the outside, but I look at the gift inside, the heart. Huh? thought Samuel. But Samuel wasn't alone in seeing how things look on the outside. Grannies and truck drivers and little kids and all of us, we look at the way things seem on the outside. But God looks at the way things really are on the inside. It's sort of like a sandwich. God doesn't care about the bread of the sandwich. God cares about what's in the middle. Do you know what the laziest part of your whole body can be? Not your toes, not your belly button but your eyes. It's like all of us need to do eye exercises every day, giving our eye muscles to see things the way they really are. Do you know the very best exercise for your eyes? To walk with Jesus. When you walk with Jesus, your eyes do the most miraculous things. 
Your eyes go around turning everything inside out. You start to see the realest, most wondrous things. People aren't really bodies, they are really hearts. For all our skin, people are really souls. So Samuel tried to see the way God sees. Daddy Jesse nudged his next son in front of Samuel, but no, Samuel shook his head. Then the next son, and the next son, and the next son, until there were no more sons left. Samuel was still shaking his head no. So how about any more sons? Well, there is the kid brother. David Jesse sighed, but he's a sheep watcher and a goat herder, and he's pretty punny too. Ah, Samuel remembered. People care about the wrapping paper on the outside, but God cares about the gift inside, the heart, which can wrap like love around everything. Go holler for him, Samuel said. We aren't eating a crumb till we meet the kid most people would forget. And then the little brother, David, the sheep watcher and goat herder and punny kid brother, came running in from the fields. Samuel exercised his eyes and imagined turning him inside so he could see his heart. David's heart was far more beautiful than what people could see with their eyes. And God said, this is the one I picked to be king. Long after that forgotten little son of Jesse was anointed king of Bethlehem, there was another unseen. One born in that very same little town of Bethlehem, one who was far, who was left out with the sheep because no one made room for him either. Jesus was the most beautiful one who came down so our ugly hearts might become beautiful in the eyes of God. Can you see it right now? Like, can you almost see beyond the wrapping paper everywhere to all the gifts inside? Those are gifts. Those gifts are inside all of us, our shimmering hearts like stars. So, a way to see things differently. Can we exercise our eyes in this Christmas season where all we see is busyness and maybe hardship, financial strain, struggles? Can we flip our view and see things from the inside out and start seeing what God wants us to see? Seeing his beauty, seeing his blessings, seeing his provision, seeing his love, seeing those around us who are amazing people because God loves them. So exercise your eyes, Church of God, and those watching around the world. Let's see things differently. Let's pray. Father God, in this season of busyness and in this season of craziness, I just pray that we would come back to the reason for the season. And that is you, Jesus, that you came to this earth as a baby that was forgotten and um, just far away, just um, hidden almost. And yet you are every day showing yourself to be real. And so I pray in this season that you would show yourself real to each and every one of us, those who are watching. You would unveil our eyes to see what we need to see, Lord Jesus, to see you. And I just pray a blessing on your people, um, that you would just protect them and guide them and, and make your provision real this Christmas season. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Blessings on your day. I'm going to go pick up my niece. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye.